I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. I'm about to apologize to the people that wanted this in advance, which was basically all of you, but I had thought since I had seen it around YouTube that I would try my hand at watching some Steven Seagal movies and maybe just kind of reacting to them on this channel. And I tried to watch three, an old school Steven Seagal movie, a kind of long ago, but you know, sort of when I was younger, like 2005-ish, 2006-ish Steven Seagal movie, and a recent one that's basically come out within the past two years or so. And each of those movies, I cannot get through. I cannot finish. I don't know what it is, but Steven Seagal's movies seem to have this trend where they call themselves an action movie, but yet they're so boring. Like, when you are in the genre of action, you have to have action. You have to have something happen. And yet with Steven Seagal movies, even when something does happen, it's always like, okay, that was it. His fighting in these movies, a lot of the time isn't even him. You can tell it's a stunt double. So let me clarify before people freak out in the comments. I'm not saying that he can't use a stunt double. A lot of actors, actresses, they use stunt doubles all the time. Even if some of them do their own stunts, you know, there's still some things that they won't do. But with Steven Seagal, it's always been the whole martial arts thing and I do everything that, you know, just seeing a stunt double in his movies, even nowadays, it's just kind of like, but I thought you were supposed to be the badass who can do everything, even with the martial arts stuff. It just kind of comes off as a little bit deceiving. Maybe nowadays, since he's older, he needs one, but, you know, early on in his career, he didn't have stunt doubles, and then he got some, and he still kind of made it out like, no, no, that's me, when it clearly wasn't. Especially nowadays, since he's gotten a little bit more, you know, chunkier. When you see Steven Seagal fighting in these movies and he looks, you know, a little bit more in shape, that's probably because it's a stunt double, not him. Heck, he even uses a stunt double to walk in his movies sometimes. It's kind of gotten embarrassing, because this guy's supposed to be this martial artist or superb at it, and yet here he is just doing things with his hands, and most of the time, like I said, it's not even him fighting in these movies. And another thing that makes them really boring to me, at least from what I've seen and from what I've seen with other YouTubers, it always seems to be the same thing over and over again for Steven Seagal. He always has to play the badass character, the hero, which, you know, there are plenty of actors and actresses out there that are known for playing roles of the good guy, but the thing is with that, is it always ends up being different in one way or another. I mean, some of my favorite, you know, characters were portrayed by actors and actresses in, like, the MCU and the DC universe that you would really only associate them with playing a hero or something like that. And then when they go on to play the opposite of what they usually play, it can be a little bit weird and sometimes might not work out. But, in my head, Steven Seagal, he has too much of a hero complex to realize that he's probably better off as a villain in these movies because he has that really I-don't-give-a-fuck attitude that villains kind of have, and he applies it to his hero character that it just doesn't feel like... Like, you don't really end up feeling good or bad for Steven Seagal in these movies. You're just kind of like... Dude, you're just being, you're being too high on yourself right now. He mumbles his way through lines, at least nowadays. Don't run out of me, little brother. We almost home in here. I mean, once you start getting to goateed Steven Seagal, I think that's when these things start to get progressively worse, and that's saying a lot considering the movies beforehand weren't great to begin with. Like, I know maybe back in the 80s and 90s when he was a bigger star and was more in shape, you know, you needed an action star, you get him, but a lot of his movies have to deal with him being ex-military, ex-cop, ex-detective, something of the sort, and he always ends up having to bust a drug lord, or maybe someone in his family got killed and he's trying to avenge them. I mean, just listen to the titles of some of these movies. I can't name off all of them, but of some of the ones I've seen, we have A Good Man, Sniper Special Ops, Contract to Kill, Born to Raise Hell, Cartels. You would think that the title of those movies would give you a synopsis as to what to expect from the movie, but these are so 
hard to follow because some of these Steven Seagal wrote himself and you can definitely tell because the plot's everywhere and it doesn't matter who he's working with the script always seems to kiss his ass to make him out like he's the best thing like not once in these movies is Steven Seagal ever in some sort of peril because at least with movies where you have a hero there's always a time where you feel like uh oh this could be it for them like they get themselves caught up in this situation but with Steven Seagal every person he finds they never get a hit on in on him and it just never feels like he's in trouble at any point in time and that kind of like just makes you go okay well he's fighting now we know he's gonna win the fight because one way or another he's gonna poke the guy in the eye and not even get touched like it's just so embarrassing Captain Insano shows no mercy. Other movies he doesn't even stand up in, like Sn Sniper Special Ops, he just kind of sits down the whole movie and he's not even in it that much. The same thing with Cartels. And there's even movies that have his name first on the bill where he's not even a main character in the movie. It's almost kind of like in the first Suicide Squad movie, how they put Jared Leto's name up there as the Joker when really he's only in the movie for... 10 minutes mainly, mostly from flashbacks. It's like, why even include his name on there as one of the stars of the movie when he's not a starring, reoccurring character? He's more of just kind of like a, you know, secondary character that, you know, has something to do with the story of another character but isn't necessarily one of the ones we're supposed to focus on. And there's plenty of movies like that where you're like, wait a minute, if this is a Steven Seagal movie, where's Steven Seagal? He's only in this for like 10 minutes, so why is he first on the bill in this case? I mean, I get it, he's probably the biggest actor that you can get unless he's doing a movie with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which happened, or Mike Tyson, which happened. Most recently, posthumously, DMX, rest in peace to a legend there. But the, I just think that the thing with Steven Seagal movies and whatnot is he's so past his prime that it's just kind of embarrassing at this point watching these movies. It's him and this director most of the time. I think his name's Keone Waxman, who is known for making shitty action films in itself. It's just one of those things where action movies... They've never really been my full thing. I mean, I get it. You know, I'm into a lot of comic book movies. They, you know, get action in, but they mix a lot of different things in. But with action movies, I feel like to really attach me, you got to have a story that's nice to follow that you can get with. And you got to have characters that in the end you can just kind of feel for, connect with. And in Seagull movies, you don't really get any of that. Like, all these women in his movies are always young. They're always wearing something revealing. And, you know, they always seem to have a thing for Seagull. Every Steve Excuse me. Every Steven Seagal movie always seems to have him going to a strip club or somebody going to a strip club of some sort. It's just his movies seem very demeaning in that way to women. Like, Steven Seagal can't write women any other way. That In his mind, there is no strong female characters. It's just like, oh yeah, you're the stripper, or you're the damsel, or something like that. And it just, again, it, it just seems like he's got this ego to him. And I think it all goes back to him, his time hosting SNL back in the 90s, where he improvised a lot of his dialogue, which, if you know Lauren Michaels, that's like a big no-no. And a lot of the skits where, you know, they were asking him to basically make fun of himself, which I've said before, if you can't make fun of yourself, then, you know, you're in the you're in the wrong line of work. If you're an actor and, you know, you host SNL, which is a comedy show, and they want to make fun of you a little bit, then I don't see what the big deal is unless it's not something that's, like, demeaning or whatever. You know, I can understand that. But Steven Seagal wanted all of his skits while hosting SNL to be him just, you know, pushing somebody through a table, beating somebody up, coming off as the badass every single time. <laughs> Right. And we were talking to him about, I was helping with Hans and Franz that week. Yeah, I didn't usually help with that piece, but I love those guys. And, uh, and, and Seagal read it, and he said, if I do this sketch, if I do it. And, you know, they, they want to fight him. Hey, we'll take you on. He goes, if I do it, I have to beat them up. Because his ego has told him that because he's a master at martial arts that that's what he's got to be that's this whole i don't know if it's just his persona he's been putting on for years or if that's how he actually is i don't know i don't hear a lot of good things 
about him anyway. It's just like, I don't really think he ever cared about acting in the first place. He just, you know, like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, were able to, you know, get themselves well-oriented with, you know, fighting skills in real life that they were able to become a uh, acting stars, especially action movie stars, and it help them take their careers off. But the difference between Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, and Steven Seagal is that the first two I mentioned are actually pretty decent actors. Steven Seagal, to me, has never been able to act because he never plays a different character. Sometimes he's trying to put on this southern accent to make it seem like, you know, he's changing things up a bit, but it just doesn't work. And there was maybe one movie that I remember his where you're like, okay, that's very different, but it's still the same, you know, cliche stuff from a Seagal movie. There's this movie where there's this zombie apocalypse going on, and he runs this group that, I guess, tries to protect the current living people from the zombies. Like, that's different, a Steven Seagal zombie movie, but it's still just another cheesy action movie that's trying to disguise itself as horror in one way or another. It's just... I don't really think Steven Seagal has ever been able to do right. It's just... He came up with this format for what he wants his movies to be, and he refuses to change or do anything else because that's just what he's got in his head is, I'm always the hero, I can't be touched, and these women have to be hot or else I'm not going to cast them. It's just, that's mainly been the running pattern I've seen in these Steven Seagal movies, and that's kind of why after the third movie of his I tried to watch that I couldn't get through, I just went, you know, he's got plenty of movies out, but I'm not going to sit here and try to watch any of these, because if I can't get through the first three that I'm watching, I don't know if I'd be able to get through any of them. I'm not sitting here trying to watch all the Steven Seagal movies, but I wanted to get, you know, a good idea and watch, you know, a good bit to really be able to make a video or make videos on these movies separately. But when I can't finish them, there's obviously something wrong, and I can't really review them for in full because I haven't seen the full movie. And like I said, having watched other YouTubers and them actually sitting through the entire movies, I can say I pretty much get the gist of a lot of these Seagull movies, and it's just kind of like, even they have a tough time sitting through it. I think one of the YouTubers I will recommend to you, and I'll probably find the playlist of it, put it in the link in the description so you guys can go check it out, is Jason Brandt. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Brandt. He's you know, went on and reacted and reviewed a lot of Steven Seagal movies and has basically, you know, shown you a couple of different ones and even his older ones to his newest ones as well. I think he's been the YouTuber that's gone the most in-depth with these Steven Seagal movies because, like I said, you get to see his reaction while watching and then there's somewhere he'll do, like, an after-movie recap with one of his buddies and, and whatnot, and he just, you know, y y you'll get more from him and you'll get more of an understanding about these Seagal movies if you go to his channel and watch those videos because me telling you that, oh, hey, these Steven Seagal movies suck. I tried to watch three movies and couldn't finish them. That's only so much of what I saw and from what I've seen from other videos on YouTube like Jason Brands, but he's sat through the movies. He's watched them all the way through, so he's got more of a, I don't really know if you can say understanding than I do. It's just he's watched these movies in his entirety, so I guess you can kind of take his opinion and listen to him more because he's actually finished them off, whereas me, I'm just kind of like, I can't get through it, so I'm probably not going to do the thing that I wanted to do and review Steven Seagal movies on here because most of his movies I have to pay for by renting, and I really don't want to do that for a Steven Seagal movie. It's like the MGK movie. I had no interest in reviewing it in the first place, but I saw it live on YouTube for free, and I was like, fine, you know what, I'll watch it now and I'll review it, but these Steven Seagal movies, everywhere I look, it's always rent, 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 and I rented three of them, and now I regret wasting my money on that because it's just like, man, I could have, I could have, you know, rented movies that were better, I could have watched movies that were better, heck, I would even watch movies that I've seen a hundred times over and pretty much know what happens rather than this. And I know what people are gonna say, just because he makes bad movies that doesn't mean they're not good, because there's always movies that are terrible but we all love for certain reasons. But I feel like Steven Seagal movies aren't so bad they're good, because to be so bad that you're good, you have to have some entertainment value to them. There's a lot of movies that do that. I love some bad movies, you know? I, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. 
But with Steven Seagal movies, when you're getting the same shit over and over and over again, and it doesn't become entertaining, then you can't really say, oh, they're so bad, they're good, you can't really give them a pass, because it's just... You've seen the same thing a hundred times over with him, and once you start getting to a point where it's hard to sit through his movies, then it's just kind of like, yeah, maybe his movies are just plain bad at this point. Overall, that's just my thought on it, and if people still want to watch his movies, then that is completely fine with me. And by watch his movies, I mean there are plenty of people watching his movies, but if you want to watch his movies and you enjoy them, that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and bash you for it. I'm just saying that there's better movie stars in the action genre to watch than Steven Seagal. I'm not even a big Tom Cruise fan. I would watch friggin' Mission Impossible or Top Gun before I would watch any Steven Seagal movie. So, yeah, that's just it for me. Stay safe out there, and until then, I will catch you all in the next one. Are you really as good as they all say you are?